Hey goddess, welcome to Behind the Scenes of Goddess Hood. I'm your host, Thea. Um, today, I actually wanted to give you all some uh, videos that we, um, and audio for those of you who are listening to audio, um, of myself and Jenaba went, who has been a regular guest of like our podcast that we had called Break Up With, um, of Goddess Hood, of like our Instagram lives. Like she's one of our regular um, guests. And um, I wanted to share some clips that are not available anywhere else. Um, so we did a live a while ago, uh, like maybe a year ago at this point on the power of friendship. So I'm actually going to stitch that along to this clip here and let you guys take a look at the power of friendship with myself and Jennifer. And uh, the friendship content that we did was really, really good. Uh, so definitely, uh, you know, tune in, stay tuned after this little clip rolls and uh, listen to the power of friendship. It's going to be really good. So also before we do that too, I want to make sure that everybody's aware this is the last week of behind the scenes. And then we're going to take a little break for a little bit and we're going to record and come back to you with some more episodes of Goddess Hood this summer. In the meantime, however, you should also check out our trailer. Um, myself and my friend Tandy have started our own podcast called Say What You Need to Say. And we put the trailer out for that um, last week. So I'm going to definitely include that in the notes. So make sure you guys take a look at that. And without further ado, uh, take a look at this friendship concept with myself and Jennifer. Okay. We wanted to come together today and actually talk about why friendship is important. Um, people have been asking a lot of questions uh, to both of us about friendship and about some of the challenges that go with it. Um, you know, we know that it's really hard to make friendships now as adults for a lot of people. So that means a lot of times your work besties, your business besties become your best friends. And so like relationships can get really complicated. And so we want to help mitigate some of that. Um, so we're going to kind of start off with like what friendship means to the both of us and kind of pivot from there. Um, I was asked this question, Geneva, by someone and I was like, that's a really good question when I was telling them about all the breakups and the friendship work that I'll be doing. And they asked, well, what does that mean to you? Like, what is, why is friendship so important to your brand? And in general, not just to the brand, but to life, friendships are like one of the most foundational relationships you know, like there's an element of that in networking when you're trying to network for your, your job or your business, right? You have to be able to build relationships and friendships with people um, so that you can network and have opportunities. Um, marriage and, and partnerships, like you uh -huh. have that foundation of friendship in order to be able to make those things work. And so we have to learn friendship as a foundation to almost every other relationship, family relationships too. I know people don't always think of family, but you know, you're born with your family, you kind of, they say you have to be with your family, but that means that sometimes bad habits get developed. So friendship doesn't happen in family either. So like, it's just foundation, yeah. in every relationship together. Um, so Geneva, I saw like, you kind of mentioned sisterhood when you talked about friendship, like you want to expand on that, and what that means to you? Yeah. So for me, I'll, I'll go with first defining friendship or kind of just like saying what friendship is to me um friendship is like you said like a foundational foundational piece of to me any relationship or any attempt to build a relationship and so um I talk about sisterhood because as we were talking I've broken up with the term best friend um, because I just somehow, I feel like that's juvenile. I feel like it's kind of high school. And I personally believe that you have different friends for different things and different friends for different seasons. And so I, it kind of like count, it kind of like contradicts best friend, because if you're saying so-and-so is your best friend, it's rare in my experience that you have like an all weather friend for all seasons, all reasons, whatever. And to me, that's like a transition into a sister to somebody that is, um, yeah, a sisterhood or a, it's kind of like a, 
I want to say it's like a soul friend to me. So yeah. I kind of transitioned what I used to think as best friend into a soul friend because we're in a platonic relationship, but we definitely have like a soul tie. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely have like transition beyond just like, I don't know, like that kind of base level best friend thing. Yeah. Um, also, I have less friends. So I feel like when you were, you know, maybe a little bit younger of a woman, you might have had so many quote unquote best friends or um, but it's like I definitely have lots of checks and balances before somebody can even transition that far mm -hmm. um, or before I'm even able to extend myself that far. Yep. So I hope that answered it. It does. And I'm see, and I, I'm glad that we're having this conversation because this even illustrates to people that like, I mean, we're friends, right? And so this is probably the first time that we've ever had a conversation about what friendship even looks like to us. Um, well, second time, because we, we talked about this yeah. before we prep, but people generally we're in friendships, right? But we're not having these conversations, you know? Yeah. So I mentioned to you when we prepared for this a while ago um, that like I have, have a friend who calls me their best friend and I just, you know, I don't necessarily feel like I am, right? Because it's just the type of behavior that I would display is how I would treat like, you know, most of my friends, right? But one of my other friends pointed out, she was like, you know, maybe she's never had a friend like you. And maybe like some of the things that you do that you feel like are very minimal or like just standard in a friendship, she may not have had that before. So it feels like best friend, you know? And so that's why I think it's really important to have these conversations because you know, expectations can come based on terms that you use. Yeah. We could perceive things differently. And like, that's where I think some of the confusion around friendship begins is that yeah. everybody has a different perspective of it. Um, and that's why we have to like check in, I think, with each other too, you know? Um, yeah, I wanted to touch on that. I'm glad you brought it up because like mm -hmm. in my mental prep for uh, this today, I was thinking of a few, and I'll share a, a story, but I was thinking of a few times where when I was younger, I definitely was not even thinking of these kind of conversations of like, well, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? How do you show up like that? And then how do I show up? Or like, what's my capacity? Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I think of so many things before I engage in a deep, level of any type of friendship with somebody yeah um I feel like it's like dating all like when you're in you know like a partner thing yeah um because there are so many things that I want to check now or that I want to talk about now before even going any further with a person like mm -hmm. I would want to know how you show up in like certain situations, right? Because like, I don't want us to get to a situation and then I'm looking like what is going on. And then you're not even, you don't even have the capacity to show up that way. Or maybe I don't have the capacity in that situation. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I am even expecting something that I'm not even ready to give out. Yeah. So I just feel like there's so many things mm -hmm. in the the friendship um, that is just not even talked about now. And, um, but I also want to talk about how this could, on the flip side, I don't want it to seem like you should have so many walls up mm -hmm. Uh before considering a friendship or a friend I'm not saying I have like a ton of walls I'm just saying there's some things that I kind of want to look out for um yeah. when I'm when I'm approaching the, the friendship situation yeah and I mean realistically to be honest you in order to find out how somebody is like for real for real because you know people can tell you all day long oh this is how I get down this is how I communicate but let you get into a situation because you know our rational minds, we can talk about things a certain way, but let us get yep. into a situation where things are heightened. It's really only from experiencing someone to <laughs> really like, you know, see if, if they are what they say they are, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or if they jive with you, if it with you. So I think 
you still should have some level of guard up. Like you're not, you're not wrong because, you know, when you have stuff to lose, especially when you're working on yourself and you're, you know, really like working to be the best version of you and you have businesses, you have family, you have kids, like all those things, you really have stuff to lose. So you have to be a little bit protective of yourself when going into friendships and then let people reveal themselves over time, you know? And that just like, you might go into a situation and it's like not revealing you know, certain information until like you could see that there's some type of trust established, you know? Um, so I don't think yeah. anything wrong with that. Yeah. So to speak more on that, and I, I would ask in a follow-up, let's say you get into a situation with, and with the person, like not caused by the person, but the person's there. Mm-hmm. And, um, the reaction or how they handled it um, is not what you expected or wanted or, yeah. How do you deal with um, a situation like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think first and foremost, we have to give people the benefit of the doubt too and like ask like, hey, like, you know, this this reaction, you know, was completely unexpected. Like, is everything okay? You know, I always, I've, so one of my mentors, when I used to do financial coaching, she would always tell you, tell us to seek the heat, meaning like go directly to the source instead of talking about, you know, talking about it to other people, talk to them directly first and foremost, and always come at it from love, but with like a tone of concern, because when you have a tone of concern versus accusation, people are more inclined to actually reflect inward instead of getting defensive, you know, like, Hey, like that reaction doesn't seem like you normally, like, is everything all right? Is everything good? You know, like what was going on there? And sometimes you'll find out, you know, more than you were expecting to find out about something that somebody had going on in the background. And that's the reaction that they gave. And then it's up to you to judge. It's hard because like, we're not really supposed to judge people, but for your situation, it's up to you to judge if that person is like right for us, you know, like after that whole conversation is had, you know, um, yeah. because some yeah. things are across the line and some things are unforgivable. Um, and I know we like to think we should forgive everybody. We can forgive the person, but not continue to be around them. Like, you know, yes, actually forgive the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Thank you for that. Um, okay. The sisterhood piece you asked about that so in preparing for this I read a few different um articles on sisterhood and it kind of gave a lot of perspective on sisterhood being like self-care really for like black women brown women especially because we often don't have safe spaces um and because we often don't have a place to like let who we really who we really are on the inside or you know our true authentic self just be and then be accepted so those are really the reasons why I 100% agree that sisterhood is soul care is self-care and soul soul care Mm -hmm. um and to have that kind of experience with somebody um that you're in a platonic relationship with to me is very sacred Mm -hmm. um and special and it should it should definitely be cared for and and nurtured and respected if if you you do have the chance to have it yeah I'm glad you said that because you know I was in a situation like almost like seven or eight years ago at this point. And I had a group of friends, non, non-black, non-brown, it just, I was the only brown person in the group. Um, and I remember getting into, um, ended up getting into a disagreement with uh, her significant other, one of the women's, you know, husbands. And it was just really interesting because this was at the time when I was still married. And it was almost like, he had waited until like my husband, like my protection wasn't around. He wasn't at this particular event to like get into this type of mm-hmm. conversation with me and kind of single me out. And so nobody like spoke up for me or anything. And so I kind of like, I had more of like a freak out reaction and I like went off because I was just like, I couldn't believe it. Nobody's yeah. like, up for me or saying anything, you know? And um, I attacked back and I think that, 
it was really difficult because we like to your point we have the right to like have these different emotions and to have things come up but in the wrong spaces like we're not able to like fully be those real like raw friends that we are because immediately I got labeled as like the angry black woman even though like like, nine times out of ten it takes me a lot to get to like I'm about to yell at everybody and like cuss out the whole like it takes me so long yeah yeah it was just like you guys know that I'm not like that but I guess because perception or because of biases they outweigh what the reality can be sometimes so sisterhood and sacred spaces like that are really important um I'm glad you you mentioned that yeah I think especially like um going back to what we said before you know you may have friends like I consider us friends Mm -hmm. but we met in a business environment so if I was going to put a label on you like in my contact then I would be like, oh, that's my business friend because that's where I met you. And that's kind of like, sometimes we'll we'll DM just any time of the day, whatever. And we can just receive that and give each other advice and be a, a definitely a vulnerable and sacred space in business. And so I think that that's important too, that like you have that in different environments that you're mm-hmm. in. Yes. Um, and you're not just sticking to like, you know how some women will have a type, they'll always be holding on to that type. Yeah. So and the same thing in friendships, like you're not just like, I don't know, with the high school friend or with the childhood friend, and then you're not experiencing this safe space in other environments. Cause I feel like it's needed in every environment at, you know. It is, it's really true. And Oh, that's, that's so good because sometimes, and I think this kind of touches on some of the questions that um, we have in here, uh, but, you know, evolving with, with the friends, sometimes people feel like just because I've been around this person for 10, 15 years, like, you know, we've gone together since high school means that that's somebody that you ought to keep around throughout the years. And the quality of the relationship is not actually good it's not actually growing you or fulfilling you and I think that's when like boundaries of those friendships have to shift because you're doing different things now and you have to really assess where people fit into your lives okay I'm gonna ask you this question because I I get this a lot so like almost a year and a half ago my therapist and I when I first started like working with her more and more she was like hey you know you tell me that you want these types of experiences with friends and things like that so like what friends do you feel like fall into those buckets where you have those experiences right now? And when she said buckets to me, I was like, hold up, why would I like put my friends in buckets? And people ask me that a lot too. Um, but once I broke down like all the areas of my life where I'm like, okay, I want to do more of these things with my friends in these different areas and finding friends that really fit those areas has made my life like less problematic when it comes to friendships. Like uh-huh. this is probably the most peaceful amount of friendships I've had in a very long time because every there's a lane for everyone you know so what do you think about categorizing friends because I've gotten some like mixed feelings on that yes I am 100% in alignment and it can be offensive um to people who have not heard of it or thought like you know when the therapist mentioned it to you you were like what Mm -hmm. but um for me, it's necessary. Like for me, I'm doing a PSA. I need some more spiritual friends right now um, that we get in the prayer line, we get in the prayer chat and that's what we do for each other. And that's how we support each other. And that's a really good example because if you were to ask yourself, if you are a believer, you have your, uh, keeper of the faith, a follower, a Christian, whatever you call yourself. Um, If you were to actually do an assessment in your phone of the people right now that you, let's say you didn't want to have like a prayer chat. Do you have people that you would put in there right now? So like, to me, that's a great example of, it's not like demeaning or 
um, disrespectful. It's just is what it is. Like, Mm -hmm. or if I have some friends that are like entrepreneurs, they've been killing it. Um, and I, you know, I'm still working, so I'm doing like the side hustle thing, um, right now. I would want some friends that can be in that other category so that I can get to, you know, where they are. They, we can talk, we can, they can share knowledge. I can just say like, Hey, this is where I'm at. Can you support me? Have you ever been here? You know, this is what's going on. Have you ever had this experience? Um, Whereas I might not be able to go to some other friends to have those kinds of conversations So it's like, to me, in a way, you're already doing it. You're just not labeling it or naming it as that. Mm -hmm. And I agree, because I think when you start to cross those boundaries of, like, which friends go with which, that's when things get really, like, then you get messy. You know, like, if you go to your, like, I love all my friends, okay? I really do. And they know because we talk about these things. Right? <laughs> not the uh I had to just, I had to qualify it with the hair <laughs> not the um hair tussle. <laughs> I'm telling you, but uh like I have a friend that can actually really, really be judgmental. And there's just but they're really great in a lot of other areas, like like she could pray down the house for me, you know. So there's certain scenarios I'm just not going to go to her and ask her for advice about because right. I know the type of reaction or the type of you know conversation that I'm going to get back and it's not going to really help any situations if I need advice about something you know and then I have friends that panic every time you know (laughs) something comes up and I'm like okay I got to help you like get back to recenter so you know kind of like what your friends what they're supposed to be you know where they fall I have one friend I can never travel with because they don't you know book stuff on time and we end up in weird situations but they know that about themselves and so do I so if I choose to like still go travel with them and the plans fall apart because I left the plans in their hands that's my fault still like Uh I'm aware of that Uh now and so it's like I think it's just kind of having an awareness and really just seeing people clearly instead of trying to put false expectations on them and then being disappointed every time you know I love what you just said um what immediately came to my mind is know thyself Mm -hmm. and then the self-awareness for you and the other person that Mm -hmm. needs to have it too because I think that like when some people find out about this or they're like you had me in a box this whole time or you had me in a bucket whatever they're offended and they might be saying to themselves why I could I could do I could fit in all the boxes. Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And I just feel like that's where the self-awareness comes in because if you have like the club friend and we have the going out friends, the brunch friends, but you're not a going out person, like you're not over here. Yeah. So it's like, it's a known thing. Like you just kind of yeah. know yourself and I have to know myself. Like it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just kind of straightforward. It's facts. Call me for brunch and karaoke, not for the club. Just like, cause that is Call just, me for brunch. Yeah. Call me for the dinner party. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. I get that a hundred percent. And I think, you know, I don't think people have enough, like, I think we, okay. If we want to be honest with ourselves, we get really offended, you know, if about like friendships ending or about like, you know, being read, being told about ourselves. Right. And so I feel like sometimes we, instead of we have like a cutoff culture cancel culture is triggered Mm -hmm. in friendships too but we have a cutoff culture where we're like well we're just gonna cut this person off because you know our stuff smells like roses and we didn't do anything wrong right versus actually like reflecting on well wait a minute like maybe ask like hey like why like why why are we having this like this this disagreement like where am I what am I missing you know because like my categories and my boxes um, are based on what's important for my life and like you know I want to travel with certain people I want to go certain places I want to do certain things um, I want to have this type of energy in my space so my boxes may not match up to what somebody else would like consider as categories for their their life and their friends and stuff and so I don't know and it's not something that you tell people y'all that like, I just want to clarify you know be like you're my travel friend only because that's all we do together and you no. put yourself in situations that are recording with those people you know and yes. that's how you do that you um, just um, you just 
really is like operating in alignment of yep. what is important to you, your priorities, your boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is yeah. to sum it up. Now, you mentioned some, you know, some people hang on to the 15 year friendship because, you know, that that person's been here the whole time where they've had this really long lasting relationship. And, you know, that could be difficult for some people. So how do you recommend people go about this in a way that is not like cut off season cancel culture where it's like nothing harming either person in the in the friendship it's just like we are outgrowing each other um in certain areas our lives are not aligned in certain areas um we have different interests now different priorities you know things like that yeah I mean here's the thing everything you just said just like that because I feel like one you have to come at it from love again like I can't emphasize that enough like there should be a like care and concern in the voice because you value the friendship right um it's just that we're not serving each other anymore so how do what do we do about that because here's the thing you might like lay all that out there and that friend is like but I want to grow but I want to like, move move forward I want to get out of the past I want to get unstuck I just didn't realize that I was like there the whole time you know and so depending on how somebody responds to that like if somebody's like yeah you're right like we're not growing I'm not growing with you and you know, um, maybe they decide that they want to, you know, figure out how to continue to be a part of your life and grow in that same direction. So that's very possible. I just don't think we ever really give people the chance to have those types of dialogues with each other. We just disappear, you know? Um, And so I think those conversations are important. And here's the thing, if anybody wants to be in like a committed relationship or they want to get married someday, you have to be able to have difficult conversations. If you want to be a manager or a director at your job and you want to advance, you have to be able to have difficult conversations. And this is where I keep saying like friendship is so foundational because if you can have those difficult friendship conversations, you can have a whole host of other types of conversations, you know? And it's so, so true. Yeah. It's so true. I remember um, a long time ago, like I think in, in my 20s, certain people I knew would say like, they don't want a friend that will call them out or they don't want like a partner that will call them out. And I was like, like a deer in the headlights because I'm like, no, if I don't have somebody that can call me out, that can really let me know what's going on. Like, let me know where I am definitely out of line. Then I, I like, I need that. Like I want somebody to be like that with me. So yeah. I think that's also a thing too. I think also part of it is the way that people go about calling people out because like I I am here for tough love 100% all day, seven days of the week. However, we are very critical on ourselves as human beings as it is. And so if you have like that inner critic already, plus your partner and the way that somebody comes about it, you know, like I had somebody kind of call me out, but it was so loving the the way he did it. I was like, oh, he was like, well, why haven't you done that yet? I was like shoot I don't know let me like do some self-reflection real quick <laughs> like the tone and the care and the concern versus like why you ain't why you ain't doing that like what's going yeah. on you being you're being weird like yeah. you know I didn't feel targeted I felt I felt like I felt like they were caring for me because that's what it is when somebody's calling you out on something on your your behavior it's because they care about you and they don't want you to self-destruct but we also have to respect people's agency as adults and their autonomy and just be like, you know what, if I come at them a certain way and they know that I love them and care about them, they are going to self-reflect if they want to be better. You know, it's just a fact. Yeah. So yeah. we all know that we're doing stuff wrong. A lot of the times we just don't, we don't like it for anybody else to tell us, but I think sometimes when somebody does come to you with concern, you, you do take it more seriously, you know? Yeah. Um, I like the care and concern. Like so far, that's my biggest takeaway from tonight is if you in any friendship, um, just approaching it from love when you're approaching certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when you're approaching something that could be like negative or crucial conversation or an issue or whatever in love and then with care and consideration I think those are like definitely the gems that I heard from you yeah and you mentioned crucial conversations so as both of us being tech people I just crucial conversations for those who don't know it's like a course and it teaches you how to like communicate but I want to call out something from there Jenna from crucial conversations one of the things like you said you were asking like how like how do we like go about those conversations where we're not growing anymore, those long relationships? Um, part of Crucial Conversations talks about the stories that we tell ourselves in our heads before we go to have conversations with people. And a lot of times the stories that we tell ourselves is what stops us from having the conversation, one. Or two, it's what gets us all hyped up because we think we know how the person's going to respond before we even have the conversation. So we might come into it with a certain tone because we think they're going to be angry we come at them angry and then of course they're going to be angry because they're responding to our energy and how we're behaving and so those stories that we tell ourselves in our heads um, really make a difference with how we go approach a conversation so um, good call out on crucial conversations just want to make sure people got that part don't tell yourself stories before you have those yeah, those. yeah. um yeah like a like the said or bestie said I got used to that <laughs> <laughs> um the, the there's a course well a lot of us have been made to, to take but there's also a book um yes. I, and then it goes from like version to version there's like it does. Um, they might be on 4.0 by now whoever so you can go on to amazon and get that book also um Mm -hmm. it's very good on like having those not Mm -hmm. just it doesn't just help you in a work conversation it'll just help you with any conversation yes it's so true that's so true actually i have it on my my shelf now (laughs) you too girl it's right Mm -hmm. it it stays ready (laughs) the other book i want to call out too actually while we're on books is safe people um that's a really good book because again, like if we're trying to be better friends to folks and we want to cross over some of the buckets and become an all around friend, cause there are all around friends. Um, but we want to become more of that, like soul friend, more of that, like deep friendship. Um, it helps us analyze ourselves and if we're safe for other people to be around and if the people that we're around are safe for us, because sometimes that book calls out little stuff that we think is okay. And it challenges some of like the societal norms that we have around it and it makes you really evaluate everything that you do in friendship. It's a really good book. Um, okay, yeah. That. I remember you telling me about that and I mm-hmm. believe I put it into my Amazon. Yeah, so, I'm going to go back and revisit that this month, I think, because that's such a good book. Honestly, it's a really good book. Um, okay, so let's talk about, okay, I think this is another like, controversial one depending on what side you sit on um let's talk about mixing friends what are thoughts on mixing friends um so mixing friends is something I believe it needs to happen naturally I'm not the person who says like because I'm friends with you know if I'm friends with bestie like we've been friends whatever now I need to be friends with her friends. Like my expectation is not that she needs to, in all this time that we <laughs> have been friends and we met, which is November, October of 2022, I think around that time. Um, yeah, November. I my my expectation is never that she's gonna be like that I, that I'm never going to say you have to be introducing me to your friend group because I've known you almost, you know, like whatever time is going to come. I've known you six months, nine months, however long I've known you, I will never be, I will never say that because it just doesn't, I just feel like it's not healthy when, when the time comes, if the person so chooses or they might invite me to a group setting. They might invite me to a um, some some gathering that's special to them. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm invited to said gathering, baby shower, wedding, promotion party, just got a bonus party, whatever. When I'm invited to that thing. To me, at that point, that's like, okay, well, this person wants me to meet other people that are special to them. 
Mm -hmm. To me, that's a signal like, okay, well, yeah. Then they're going to say, this is so-and-so. This is my friend, best friend, soul friend, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be like, oh, okay, yeah. Nice to meet you and da-da-da. Now, I don't leave that gathering and say, I got to get this person's number. Me and this person got to start talking. Me and this person have to be whatever. If it, if it develops into that, great. But it's just not my expectation that because I have moved into a friendship with someone, I am now all of their friend's friend. Like, I exactly. just. I agree. I 100% agree. I mean, if it happens naturally, great you know but just because no not really you know I don't think it's a mandatory thing and Mm -hmm. I still have yet to figure out I know you and I spoke spoke about this before I've still yet to figure out why that is even an expectation um yeah somebody's mind I feel like and again, this is me assuming because I, I don't think like this, so I don't know. But this is me like inferring that um, I think that maybe what it is, because I've heard people say this before, where it's like, I just want everybody in my life to like get along and mesh, which is really not going to always happen because different uh-huh. personalities are different personalities. It doesn't make them right or wrong. It's just some personalities don't, just don't click together and that's okay, you know? Um, but I think it's just the desire of having like harmony across the board. And to be honest, it's so unrealistic unless you keep, unless you keep everything separate and you get an idea. Like if you've been around somebody long enough, like I know which friends of mine I could bring together now, you know, if I was to like have something happen, I know which friends of mine just don't ever need to meet, you know, but you should be able to gauge that over time and it shouldn't be an expectation. I don't, I don't think anyway, but that's what I have heard a lot. I just want everybody to get along and be her Yeah, I want to have girlfriends I can go do girls trips with. And that's great. You could get those, but it may not be five girls. It might be like two of y'all or three of y'all, you know, and that's okay. And that's still a girl's trip, you know? Yeah. A girl's trip is me by myself too. So. Girl, me, myself, and I. That's plenty of company. <laughs> that's the three, three of us have taken several trips, okay? <laughs> that part. We but don't I have a problem. I get that. I get that 100%. But see, like, here's the thing. You and I are talking like this. I do all kind of stuff by myself. I travel by myself. I stop in all kinds yeah. of places and I make friends along the way because that's just how I am. But I don't need to have people to go somewhere. And I don't Ooh, think a lot of people have funny. really established that piece of their personality yet and here's the thing wanting to be validated and wanting to have like close friendships there's nothing wrong with that but it's just start getting curious if you can't sit with yourself by yourself like start getting right. curious as to like why I can't be alone why you know? that is. this is so important let's let's talk about I'm getting excited over this topic let's talk about being friends with yourself (laughs) oh wait a minute (laughs) would would you want to be a friend to yourself like the same way you're trying to like make friends like and you have your friendships on these really high standards Jennifer I just think you cracked something because listen we put people on these high standards but like we measure up to our own standards as friends if like we were like you know yeah again I'm I'm thinking of I don't know who's maybe it was that guy that died that was like a little bit toxic that relationship guy oh Kevin Samuels yeah I don't is he the one that was saying like yeah I think it was him he is he the one that was saying like you're wanting like a five-star top tier man yep. and yep. you're not five star. so then let's talk about that in a friendship context That's you fair. want this soul friend best friend you know um the sweetie song is playing in my mind so, <laughs> that's my type <laughs> sorry you want um this top top friend but like are you that person do you have capacity to give that be that person um mm-hmm. and like you said do would you be a friend to yourself like on the street like if you saw yourself and then I want to just add on just one little thing it's 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 a lot but do you even like yourself um because if you don't it's gonna be really hard to be a friend to yourself and when and when you started talking about you do all these things with yourself Mm -hmm. it it reminded me of that because I feel like you can't do that unless you like yourself 
Yeah. You can't do that unless you like to spend time with yourself, be alone Mm -hmm. and not have a problem with it. Sit with yourself alone in the room, you know, whatever. Um, And I do know for a fact that that's very hard for a lot of people. And I just think that's your first piece of self-awareness. Um, a lot of time that's really only unpacked through therapy, but yeah, that's a big deal because how, yeah. you know, those pieces then translate into the friendship. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that because, and see, oh, I forget which talk I did, but it, I, one of the, oh, it was about situationships with one of the, with, DJ who she has her own dating app out of Atlanta um play for keeps that plug in that um <laughs> but anyway oh, so yeah. yeah you should go check it out um but what was interesting is is that we were talking about what qualifies us to start like you know being involved with people right and I was telling her like when I'm looking at who I, who I'm wanting to date even I look at like how they take care of themselves. Do they take care of themselves? Um, and like, are they reckless with themselves and their bodies and their health and things like that? Like, you know, because believe it or not, that stuff can impact, you know, you too, if you're attached to someone long enough. And so if they don't treat themselves well, it's very likely that they're going to have a problem treating you well and you know what I told you about my mentorship so I used to have to um edify all the speakers on a international like zoom call like a lot of people and one of the tips that I got when I was learning how to edify and introduce people properly is that if I have a problem letting other people edify me if I don't feel good about myself my introductions are going to be trash and they're not going to be listening to people because you have a trouble speaking highly of yourself. So you're going to have trouble speaking highly of others. And I was like, wow, that is, deep. that's a gem right there. Yeah. That, that stuck with me. And I was constantly requested <laughs> to do introductions for people. I didn't even know. So that's what I'm saying. Like you have to really like get into that of like, what can I find that's good about somebody and highlight that. But if you can't find that in you, we yeah. find finding everybody else because we, we have a lot of cracks and faults that we're not dealing with, you know? Yeah. I like that you brought that up because I think on the flip side of that, what you said about the dating piece, the same thing should be applied to friends because if you're around somebody long enough, like you just said, that can't find good in themselves, negative self-talk, um, and then you take on that friendship in a I'm trying to help them. I want to bring them up. Um, I'm trying to save them type of thing. It could very well be that those traits transfer, that energy transfers onto you. And then now like mm-hmm. all the work you've done or whatever space you're in, you're now at the same place that they are. Yeah. And for our black women listening, I'm saying this, especially for us, like, let's stop being Captain save a because that's what it's <laughs> just to, I mean, I did it for, I did it for a while, you know? So I'm, I'm, we only say things that like, we can, you know, consciously to. say that we've been, you know, we've been there. Um, but also like to your, to Jennifer's point again, like being around it long enough, like I had this other mentor and uh black woman, she was brilliant. And she kept giving me an example of like the vinyl record, right? Because you know, vinyl is made by pressing it, by putting heat, by putting grooves into it. That's where the sound resonates from. And when I was kind of going through my separation and dealing with a lot of the toxicity that was in the marriage, she was like, you know, I know you're trying to fix things. I know you're trying to do your best, but even though you're like con- consciously, you're shutting off so that you're not taking things in, but subconsciously, regardless of what protection you have up on yourself, you're still hearing those things. And if you hear them enough, you start to internalize them. And now I'm the one, the vinyl resonating the sound, you know? So it's just like, wow, it's powerful who you're around. It's powerful what your environment looks like. Like we're on the call right now. I have candles going. I have like my tea, like you have to be like, you have to protect your space, your environment. And, um, but to your point, the more you try to save people, and you haven't saved yourself and you don't have a layer of protection for yourself, 
know how to recover, you're going to be taken around in circles too. So that was really good. Yeah. Time. Let, let's talk about some boundaries or some, <laughs> oh, Lord, <laughs> or some like, um, I want to call it like taking care of ourselves. Yes. Making some safe space for ourselves. Like, yep. For example, sometimes you might, you know, this is goes back to like knowing the friend, knowing mm-hmm. yourself, mm-hmm. having the buckets or the whatever, whatever you want to say boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say you have a friend, you see the name come up, they're calling and texting, whatever. Like sometimes you need to have some sort of boundary where it's like, right now, I don't have it to you know, that friend might always cause like for, you know, this, this, whatever, Mm -hmm. or some drama or some help or, you know, I don't know, whatever. So you have to have some sort of like practice or ritual routine where it's like, I can't do this today. Um, You might shoot a quick text. Hey, I'm not able to talk tonight but I can call you back at this time or this day. Um, Mm. Hey, everything, is everything okay? Um, I'm not going to be able to get on the phone with you, but you know, whatever, whatever. So I think you always need to have these kinds of like self-care things, even with the friends, even with like Mm. your ace, boom, whoever, like you have to have these things because Part of the friendship also is taking care of you because you cannot, you know, we all know can't pour from an empty cup, can't give if you have no capacity for it. Yeah. Um, And then the last thing you want to do is get on that call and then not be able to play whatever role or part that person is expecting from you as a friend because you shouldn't answer it in the first place. Yeah. You don't even have anything. I agree to like provide there yeah I agree with that I mean twofold like I have a friend that we've like started practicing this where we ask like hey I have something heavy to share do you have capacity for it or like Mm -hmm. I'll text like hey I have something I need to tell you but it can wait till tomorrow like let me know a good time when you can talk and you're able to like you know chat and so we try to like respect those boundaries too so we have to do that with each other but also to ourselves and if you cannot do it yet listen the iPhones are so powerful. They have focus modes, right? I'm sure all the Androids do too, but they have focus modes where if you're at a certain time of day, your focus mode should switch on to where it's personal and stuff is filtering out. You don't have it in you, put it on do not disturb if you don't have enough discipline mm-hmm. to not answer the phone. You gotta use like, that d people. Yeah. Please use that d d to protect yourself yeah. <laughs> in your space, please, yeah. because Truth be told, we need to have like a DND. I mean, emergency in consideration, like mm-hmm. stuff does happen to people. But you, know you you said something there because sometimes when you call people back later, like after like whatever the hype was, it's not that important anymore because they like too. they've yeah, they've uh-huh. Yeah. Um and so I mean, I'm a believer of the D&D needs to be on at a certain time because I'm trying to like get my night routine healthy. So the D&D is going on at like 10, regardless if I'm really like, or during the week, if I'm like really sleeping or not. But Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to, you know, get myself (laughs) together. But D&D should be there for the times when you need deep focus, solitude, um, taking care of yourself, Mm self-care, whatever. Um, And I think you should let friends know that. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think another boundary that that should be up to, uh, remember how we talked about seeking the heat earlier, right? Going to the person directly. Um, I had brought together a friend group one time just for a fun activity wasn't expecting for anybody to like try to be besties or nothing you know and uh one of the women called me later on after the fact after I thought we all had a great time there was no drama no you know like everything was like perfect in my mind and they're like I think so-and-so has a problem with me I was like oh well did you ask her 
<laughs> and that's a boundary for me like that's a big boundary for me like why are you coming to me why do you feel comfortable coming to me telling me gossip like have you gone and talked to this person directly you know sometimes I understand people need to vent and like get their mind right first but there's a difference between venting and gossiping and there's like a yeah. fine line and you know the difference we all know the difference when it feels like we're talking about about somebody behind their back versus like coming yeah. up with a solution to something or like really yeah. like crafting like you know when someone was being intentional and trying to be thoughtful and how to approach the other person versus like I just came to talk crap about them because I felt like talking yeah about them. yeah so like, you should ask her about that because I don't really know I didn't observe anything like that so I think that you should go talk to her you have her phone number That's an important boundary and I love that um and that should be used to me in all spaces whether it's work friendship mm-hmm. um whatever because when you don't have something in place for that people will come and try to drag you into that energy drag you into that story drag you into that gossip next thing you know they're saying that you said this or was in this or you know caused this and it's like you maybe just didn't have anything to do with it but you were a bystander like yeah I remember when I think I was in the fifth grade and we were going to like I think a track meet and I was and I had a friend but like people were talking about her on the on this van and I was friends with her and um the rest of the people on the van were talking about her Mm -hmm. and just cracking jokes and stuff and she so later on I'm just like well what's up like what's up with me and you because I noticed like she was um a little cold, a little different. Her behavior had changed. So I was like, well, what's up? Like, what's going on? And she was like, well, you didn't say anything. And I was like, yeah, no, like, I I, I wouldn't talk about you like that. Like, I, I'm what, I didn't say anything. And she was like, yeah, that's the point. Like, you didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Like, you were a bystander. Mm-hmm. And so from that moment on, I feel like that's like in my head of like, you know, I apologize and everything, but like, that's always in my head of like, well, what was your role in this? Like, were you just sitting there or were you taking part or were you participating? Um, were you defending? Were you trying to cut it off? Like, what were you an ally? Like what, what, when I say you, I mean like myself, what was I doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. That's a really big one because sometimes saying nothing is is saying something sometimes in some people's eyes, you know. So I totally get that. That's a difficult one though. That's that's really that's that's tough. But tough. that is a good boundary to have. Um Yep. And I tr- I mean, I haven't done it every time since 5th grade, but mm-hmm. I definitely try to be conscious of my role and stuff like that. And what did I do um and then I also feel like, like you said at first, you need to ask, I've had to ask a friend when they have brought drama or I don't know, whatever things that is just not, shouldn't be said. Yeah. Um, to me, I've had to ask a friend, like, why does this person feel comfortable coming to you about this about me mm-hmm. or saying this about me to you? Mm -hmm. and me and you are in a friendship yep so I feel like that's very important of like what you said when you when you what you thought of when the person said I think so-so doesn't like me or whatever like what what makes you think that like what makes you think that we're that we should be in this kind of conversation right now or this conversation should be you know or I've even had to ask like well what did you say Mm -hmm. or what did you do to the friend yeah other who the other person was coming to or whatever so absolutely yeah and here's the thing since I did that that friend has kind of like made their exit which hey you weren't meant to you can't handle the heat you know stay out the kitchen so um yeah yeah I really enjoyed this conversation. I think we should come back <laughs> and do this again because there was so much to get to. So, yeah. so many gems. Um, I'm so glad that you recorded it. And um, for the people that were not able to come, we'll definitely be posting the clips. And yeah, I think we should have a part two for sure. I loved it. Thank you for being on. Thank you.